Welcome back to another TechMind video. So in this edition, we're going to be taking a look at WSPR. So what is WSPR? Well, it's commonly referred to as WISPA, and it stands for Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. Now the WISPA protocol was designed and a program written initially by Joe Taylor, K1JT was his call sign. The software is now open source and is developed by a small team of enthusiasts. So WISPA implements a protocol designed for probing potential propagation paths with low power transmissions. We're talking milliwatts, anything from 10 milliwatts up to 500 milliwatts, although some people do use up to 5 watts. Now the transmission carries a station's call sign, main head grid locator and the transmitter power in DBM. The receiving program can decode these signals with a signal to noise ratio as low as minus 28 dB within a 2500 Hz bandwidth. Those stations that are receiving and decoding the WSPR signals around the world are also able to upload their reception reports to a central database called WSPRnet. There are a few ways in which we can transmit a WSPR signal. One of the ways is using a transceiver connected to a computer and then running some special software such as WSJT-X, which supports the receiving and transmitting of WSPR. Now the other method, if you're not interested in receiving WSPR, would be a dedicated WSPR transmitter, such as this one, the Whisper Desktop Transmitter. I believe this one outputs around 300 milliwatts. The other option that we have would be to use a Raspberry Pi. Yes, we can actually use a Raspberry Pi as a WSPR transmitter without any extra RF power stages. It is advisable though to use it with appropriate filtering depending on which band you use. Now the estimated power output of the Pi is roughly around 10 milliwatts. Now the application I used was a command line tool called WSPRRY. PI, which is available free of charge from GitHub. I'll leave a link down in the video description of the installation instructions and how you do it. It's literally about three or four lines of code that you type into your Pi console and it will compile it and then be ready to use. Now, once we have the software installed on the Pi, in my case, I'm using a Pi Zero wireless, we now need to connect an antenna to the Pi's GPIO pins. Now, pin seven connected to the inner of the coax, while pin nine connects to the outer braid. The antenna that I'm using for this test is an N-fed halfway for 40 meters, which has a 49 to one unknown at the feed and a seven megs loading coil and an extra two meters of wire for the 80 meter band. In fact, this antenna is resonant on 80, 40, 20, 10 and some other bands in between. I'll do a full video on this antenna at a later stage once I've actually got it installed correctly. Now my N-fed half wave will be installed in an inverted L configuration with 10 meters going up vertically and the rest will be horizontal going off to the chimney on the house. Currently it's only around five meters vertical and the rest along the garden hedge, which is probably around eight feet high. So I put this to the test and left it running overnight and when I came back to check the WSPRnet website I was absolutely amazed at how far I'd been able to transmit or how far I was received. I was received in Europe, right down to Portugal, even as far up as Iceland. Uh, I couldn't actually believe it considering what I was using to transmit, just, just a Raspberry Pi connected to the antenna and the fact that the antenna was so low down. Well, there we go, guys. That's a brief introduction to WSPR, and it's quite amazing how far such a, a small amount of RF energy can can transmit on uh, on the low frequencies. Um, Ten milliwatts coming out of my Raspberry Pi Zero. I'll just play you a very brief, quick sample of what uh, WSPR sounds like. You can see it here or hear it here on my FD nine nine one. As you can tell, it's just like a constant tone, but it, it does change over over time. And it's those tones which change, which contain the information in that kind of packet. Anyway, if you have a amateur radio license, then you are allowed to go ahead and do this. You cannot do this if you do not have an amateur radio license, but you can go on the WSPR net website and have a look, type in people's call signs. Um, it does hold up to, I think, the last 24 hours. I haven't been broadcasting uh, for a few days, so you're not going to be able to see anything but when I get my aerial installed correctly it's going to be really interesting to see how far it goes I might do a little live stream just to tell you that it's running with the antenna installed correctly and you can have a look live to see where that signal's going anyway until the next video guys you take care and uh, we'll see you in the next one